Hello and welcome to this episode of Superhero Ethics Meets Pandavision. Today we're continuing our coverage of The Witcher Season 2. Today we're talking about Episodes 3 and 4 with myself, Matthew Fox, Paul Hoppy, and Ashley Coffin. All that and more after a commercial break we have no control over. Welcome back. Um, yeah, so we watched episodes three and four. The story's continuing to unfold. We're getting a lot of new characters. We're getting Dougal from Outlander, which a lot of us are excited about. Um, Paul's no idea what I'm talking about. Many of you know what we're talking about. Dougal McTaggart. Uh, <laughs> what uh, general thoughts? What do you all think of these two episodes? I like them so much that I watched five and then I stopped. I couldn't help myself. Yeah. I had to see the, what was going to happen. Like, I'm, I'm really enjoying this season. I am. I think it's fun. Well, I found plenty of things to complain about, uh, <laughs> but there was still a lot. That Which I means you enjoyed it. N- no, I mean, I did. I bet I, I know. Was. I bet I know. Yeah. I, I just oh, mean that yeah. I think you quite enjoy finding things we to should complain play that about. Game. Oh, sure. No, that's not really <laughs> true. I'd actually rather have nothing to complain about. Like, my goal isn't to complain. I just say what I feel. I do well, like okay. that idea, though, to play that game. Like, what what do, yeah. what do we think upset Paul the most? Right. Exactly. Ooh, good question. So there's no animals that were directly harmed that I remember. I think. So yeah. I think we take that out. I don't remember. There's no characters we really liked killed, which is another big thing. What, what's your guess, Ashley? Hang on. Let me go through my notes real fast. <laughs> I, I there think may be I cash have... prizes involved. I think I have an idea. Okay. Um, let, me, let me make my guess because it's also one of the things that bothered me. Oh. I have no idea what Yennefer's motivations are right now, mm. and I don't understand if the Nilfgaards are supposed to be good guys or bad guys or what, because it it feels like so much of what we set up in season one as mm-hmm. to like where people stood is being changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was one of the things I thought that some of the stuff felt like it was kind of contrived in order to get characters where they wanted to get characters. Okay. That actually, what that didn't bother me, and I kind of like that. Um, cool. okay. I kind of like that. that they are sort of playing with like who is who are the bad guys who is the enemy like are we rooting for the mages first we were rooting against them then at the end of last season they kind of got us to maybe get right. on their side a little bit and now it's like nope they're horrible um, <laughs> but maybe how about this Nilfgaard pretty sure they're going to turn out to be horrible too but they're kind of like they're trying to sell us on it I think yeah. and that I didn't particularly mind to be honest I, okay. I'll say more about that, but Ashley first. What's My your guess? guess is um, that he killed that monster when it looked like it wasn't trying to kill Siri, but was like maybe trying to like it looked like it liked her. Oh yeah, no, I mean, oh, that's an that's an interesting take. Um, yeah, I kind of that didn't bother me either because okay, I, I had thought no it was idea trying then. to eat her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I thought um, it was trying to eat her too. It kind of <laughs> stopped, that... and even Ken was like, "Oh, it, it likes her." Although I think yeah. it was like she was like in a crevice and it couldn't quite get in there. Oh, she like that's found what it somewhere was. that she could kind of hide. You know, like like it was the rancor and she was Luke like in the corner and then, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then someone came and beheaded it. Um, which, you know, I've got my thoughts on monsters and monster slaying and blah, 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 blah. It did feel consistent with the, no, I'm, you know, I'm going to kill these things when they're about to kill someone else. Right, um, right. Or these people or whatever, you know. Um, no, the things that I found... Um, annoying mostly were like spending more time in the you know the the stupid like mage power structure stuff and fucking grand admiral stregobor and <laughs> yeah, hogwarts um, is have like they need some they need the new got, ruler over there in hogwarts they've they're got some, some fucking issues you know and yeah and i i do i kind of feel you on the sort of contrived you know pushing the characters where they want to go for me that mostly was a problem with the the mages Mm -hmm. guild or whatever and them kind of um being like oh yeah you just behead this guy and then we're good and like i i found her motivation actually made sense to me because to me it felt like she was basically saying you're kind of you know you're not going to fucking tell me what to do or who to be that's you know, why I... I'm going to make that decision. And I, I liked that. But I found the whole con- thing leading up to that contrived and stupid. Yeah. I, I, go ahead, Ashley. That's why I think I like Yennefer so much because she reminds me so much of me. It's like even when it's <laughs> yeah. good for her, like you're not going to tell me what to do ever. Right. And if you do tell yeah. me what to do, I'm going to do the opposite of that. Even if it's detrimental to everything else that I'm doing, it's just the fact that you told me I can't do it. And that's kind of been right. her motivation since the first yeah. You know, season with everything. Yeah, you know, you so. tell me I can't have a baby. Well, I'm going to figure that out. You tell me I have right. to cut this person's head off. Yeah. I probably should just to make things better. But, you yeah. know, and you also told me to tell people I don't have powers anymore. And I'm definitely not doing that. 
Just right. everything that anybody told her to do, she yeah. just did the opposite of. Yeah. I can relate I think, to that part, too. <laughs> I think 90% of that, I totally agree with. For me, the the odd part was her deciding, therefore, I'm going to hop, hop, you know, therefore, I'm going to jump in with this Nilf Guardian and head to them. Oh. And, and I think I think it gets back to... Here's, I think, the heart of my, my complaint about Nilf Guardians, and it kind of goes back to season one, mm-hmm. is that... Because you're right, Paul. I love morally complexity. I love learning that 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 we as the the audience have been listening to an unreliable narrator, and that maybe like these people are not as bad as we were told, or these people are not as good as we were told. The problem, though, is that in episodes one and two of the show, of season one, we saw Nilfgaard just slaughtering all the civilians of a city. Yeah. And so, to me, it's. Like, I kind of wish we hadn't seen that mm. because then, like, when Jilla says, we're not here to kill people. We're here to liberate them. We're right. here to – and we know that's wrapped up in all this religious fervor. And I'd be like, okay, so maybe there's different stories being told. But, like, we saw Nilfgaard be hideous, horrible. Right. We're killing everyone. That's just like and, every classic church. We're just liberating in them from the mortal yeah. coil. It's fair. We're yeah. killing them for their own good. Exactly. <laughs> we're saving their souls yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I could totally get Yennefer being like, F this, I want nothing to do with any of you. I'm going to just go off on my own. And maybe even, like, freeing the guy. But yeah, it just, it was very dramatic the way she did it. And so, of course, in that moment, she's running off with him. But I think that, the wanting to jump back with him was the thing that I think kind of mm. threw me the more. Because the rest of it, yeah, I totally get. Yeah. Like, she is just, she, she's a cat with music, magical yeah. powers. I love like, that you know, she went she and like, put on her head cutting outfit on. We had, yeah. well, she right, changed right. so many outfits in this, and she looked fantastic throughout most of this episode, though. Oh, my God. The outfits that they put her in. One of them, I was like, why does it look like it's just falling off? Like, that's her what? bathing cloak. That's her bathing cloak. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. The, the, I, I don't know what the lingerie magic was at that time, but the ability to, like, hold that dress, like... <laughs> Barely above anything like. Right, right. I had a long rated. talk with Ken about that because it's like I am not busty in any sort of the term, and I'm just like I wonder what it's like to have, <laughs> you know, boobs that big, right, and then to be right. able to like you. I could understand how your clothes, if it was tight enough, would stay on. I'm just like right, right. wonder what that's like because we had a whole discussion about it. Yeah. I, I thought it was funny because, like, you know, season one, there was a lot of nudity. And, and here, like, they did the bathing scene in a way where they didn't show any of that. Yeah. Which was in, but then they just had her cleavage, like, as just right, right. so close there the whole time. Oh, hand up in the back since we're talking about the bathing scene. Um, I thought – so this is where I get confused about who's a traitor and who's not. Because that blonde mage stabbed Yen – like twice oh. and was a traitor but was huh. she mind like under some kind of mind control and if so who did that and why don't we know anything about that oh. I, I, do, I do remember there was mind control as part of the battle you know and that's part of how things happen I, I thought the, the more I thought more about that the, 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 the guy traitor who's now just part of the mage council I, I thought he was also mind controlled um, but hmm. it's there's a lot that's not very clear <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah, the, season one definitely felt not very clear. And here, most of the things I find unclear here are kind of holdovers from that. I find like most uh-huh. of the stuff that's been introduced makes sense to me. In in terms of her running off with, um, Cahill. you know, I Sir think I finally bones. figured out his Sir yeah. Cheekbones yeah. is so much better. Forget what I just said. <laughs> Sir Cheekbones, it shall be. <laughs> Sir Cheekbones. Um, I, she, you know, she was like, "I'm not saving you. I'm saving me." And I yeah. think. She wasn't necessarily planning to go to Sintra or Centria or whatever it's called. Centra. Originally. No, but it it has like an oh. elven name. Like Sintra is like the, the colonizer name. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I have it here. Yeah. Um, uh, Zintria. 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 Yeah. Okay. Zintria. So I think she finally decided to go there because like she wants him for leverage kind of. And I think she thinks mm-hmm. like this guy is useful to me. Right. You know? okay. Right. And I, told, I see that. So yeah. I, and I think that makes some sense, you know? Yeah. Um, and now that she doesn't have her magic powers anymore, it's like, you know, being on her own is a much scarier proposition than when she could just portal herself out of somewhere. Yeah. You know? Right. I love, he keeps, he's like, use your powers. She's like, oh, I don't want to tell you. And then finally has right. to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's like, yeah, well, the thing is. <laughs> yeah. um, and I do think in the last two episodes, they established that her and Fringilla, like, even though they'd be kind of on opposite sides and they were sort of, you know, um, 
rivals back from the Hogwarts days. Um, I, I know there's a name for the school, but that's just the easiest way to talk about it. Themyscira, uh, remember? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but like the two of them bonding about how they were both kind of pawns of this wizard council and the politics. Yeah. I like that a lot. So I do see, yeah, there could be some real connection there. Yeah, um, I like what Frangel is doing now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's I think. interesting. I I I don't I I think the Nilf Guardians are going to turn out to also be horrible, just because they're siding with the elves against some other horrible people. Yeah, doesn't mean right. they're not. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of a uh, you know empires versus empires or everybody's you know, horrible. Everybody's horrible, pretty much. Yeah. You know, I think some individuals like try to kind of do the best they can, but it's hard to really look at any group of people here and be like oh yeah you're good you know like the 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 thing that i find weird is like the elves like i think francesca has the most reasonable motivation um mm-hmm. but i still I find just it... figured out she was pregnant also completely oh, went over my head she wasn't she is no and... but it's new oh okay because what in the yeah. baba yaga's tent she yeah. and i thought that maybe she had that bump from the beginning no the whole point oh maybe she and did, who's but... the father right that's a good question okay is it uh, Phil Evangel? That's what uh, I was thinking. If it's not her brother, or ooh, maybe the right. father is her brother. I don't know. They did that <laughs> back then. <laughs> Lannister, maybe that's Lannister why was... they're not coming to term. We don't know. Like, <laughs> oh, good point. Ugh. But, you know, it seems like they have been getting pregnant, right? But they haven't been carrying. Right. Till know, term. To term. Mm-hmm. So, um, but, like, I find her kind of unsympathetic and, like, untrustworthy. Even though I feel like she's the one who's like, well, yeah, you're trying to, you know, kind of like lead your people forward who have been, you know, uh, horribly oppressed. Right. And right. I don't know. I think some of that sometimes the dynamics of like oppression is that when a group does get like super oppressed, it's it's hard to move forward in any kind of like easy, natural ways, I guess. Yeah. I, I don't know. You know, I mean... Yeah, I- I think it's very true, and I, I actually thought they did a great job of kind of lampshading that just a bit with Stregobor, because there's a moment where, like, they're talking about the things the elves are doing mm-hmm. to fight back, and he says, look, therefore elves can't be trusted. Yennefer can't be trusted. Right. And it was just such a, like, you know, we have trapped you into a situation where fighting back is your only option, mm-hmm. and then we're going to use the fact that you're fighting back to justify all the terrible things we've done to you before. Right. You know? And that's, like, such a part of how racism works, of how any yeah. kind yeah. of, like, labeling the other works. Yeah, um, for sure. And with, like, with uh, with um, Yennefer, like, they're going to be like, oh, see, we couldn't trust her. But it's like, you couldn't trust her because you put her in a situation where right. yeah, you, know, there was you gave no her this ultimatum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... You know, she. I don't think she was gonna like set that guy free. I don't think she was gonna run off to Centria, you know, and go yeah. team up with Nilfgaard. Like that wasn't what she was gonna do. But she she came back to the Wizarding School because she felt, you know, comf- like maybe not comfortable, but more at home in Aratusa, right? Than oh, there anywhere was else. Aratusa. Yeah. 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 Uh, Tesea too is like her mother yeah. figure. And right. She exactly. Felt- so even when yeah. she did what she did, like, I saw that little smirk smile on Tasea's face. Right, exactly. Like, there's some real connection between them, right? It reminds me a little bit, actually, of um, She-Ra with, like, Shadow Weaver and Katra and Adora's relationship. Oh, yeah. I think it's really cool. You know, cool. where she's, like, horrible to them as children, but then at the end... Eh, never mind. Spoilers. But, that's like... Tough love. Yeah. There's some, there's some yeah. connection there. You know, there's some love... It, you know, I mean, sometimes someone's abusive and loves someone. Like, those. that's not being loving, right? But it doesn't mean they don't have those feelings. Right. It's not a healthy love. Exactly. Like yeah. Tough but love. that doesn't mean that their feelings aren't real. It just means yeah. that they're not expressing them in a, in a productive Like, I, I think what we're getting is that Tessia is just, like, pragmatic to, at, at all yes. turns, you know? And doesn't... She can't understand... Like, she both honors and loves... That Yennefer is just pure passion and like you cannot tell me what to do and I think she both admires that and kind of wishes that she was more of that but also mm. doesn't understand it and mm-hmm. that's why she yeah. like if someone comes to often if someone comes and says look you did something so great and I'm so proud of you but we need to not talk about it I, I'll just assume the whole first part was nonsense you know right, right. I believed it from her. I believe she honestly thinks Yennefer is the hero of Sodden Hill and she hates that this has to be done. 
but she's just like let's she's in that place of like let's always play the game let's right. always do the pragmatic thing yeah. And Yennefer's like, fuck this. Let's just not play. Let's right. just do let's, our own thing. Let's just flip the board over. See, I don't think there's a sentence throughout these last four episodes where Yennefer hasn't said fuck in there. She's like, this fuckery and that fuck uh. this and fuck it. And I'm like, I love you so much. I, I think one of the things I love so much about season that I know we disagreed on this, but when Gerald would just say fuck, fuck. like part of what I liked it is it was that moment of like, yes, so much of this is like, you know, medieval, like that medieval kind of talk that's happening. But that, like, just the real thing that's said. And in the same way, when Shregobor is basically like, trying to, like, invade her mind. Oh, that's scene. And, 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 and steal the stuff from her in this horribly abusive, like, you know, violating way. And she just says, like, fuck off! Like, or fuck you! Or whatever yeah. it is. Like, <laughs> it was just so, like, the language was not, you know, like, medieval at all. But it was so real. And I loved it so much. I, I think Game of Thrones did it better. And maybe it's just me with, um... Uh, what's the actor who plays girl, Gerald? Uh, I know his name. Oh, Henry Cavill. Yeah, I just think it's the way he said. I don't know. He says it's so cookie cutter. It just doesn't sound as natural. That's fair. I don't know, but I, I, we'll see. We'll... I don't know. It works for me. Yeah. And, and fuck is like over a 500 year old word. So right. it's not like not medieval any more than any of the words we say sound anything like they did in medieval times. And these right. people would have been speaking Polish in the book and whatever the common tongue is in um yeah wherever the fuck this place is <laughs> <But>. <laughs> the the stuff against the elves since we're it was hard to watch like them cutting their oh, ears yeah. off and the torture it was and did you see the paintings of them it was like they were calling them like pigs elf there was like pigs with elf ears painted all over it was messed mm-hmm. up yeah like that, we saw that scene where like just random soldier made um the elf prisoner uh you know urinate on himself um, and they, they, there was another name for that city. Is that supposed to be just like the next northern city that is like kind of dealing with the elves, or is that a place we're supposed to know about? I, I feel like that's probably that new king douchebag that we met. That's probably his town. I don't okay. know who that guy is. Gors Valen okay. is the name of the town. Oh, Gors Valen. Yeah, and where you had also the, the the crier like talking about the wild hunt. The God, wild hunt is coming. always got to have some crazy asshole with a bell just <laughs> <laughs> running just around being loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that part i i mean that was hard to watch and it like i mean it makes sense in the context of the story and it shows you know and how another group of people are all horrible too you know mm-hmm. and um I, I i don't tend to enjoy that too much i mean it, it i i feel like sometimes they dig in like a little a little more than necessary mm-hmm. um but the the things i really didn't like in that area was like when then they met up with the two elves in the sewer and like you know the one elf like you know like don't fantasize about a happy future or you're gonna get killed by the punk oh, yeah. you know i was so just like painful. oh like, he's like, about no. to oh, yeah there it is <laughs> yeah of course of course he wants to raise chickens which you know i mean whatever um but like yeah and then i'm just like <laughs> um and i think they started that episode with a, a couple of other kind of nonsense feeling deaths where like you know, they're trying to poison the king and then the mage comes in and does whatever. And he's like, drink this. And it's like, why the fuck would you drink it? Like, yeah, what like, the fuck? That stuff yeah. always bothers me so much. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know. So maybe that, he thought he would get tortured or something. Well, I wouldn't like want to get stabbed through the neck. Yeah, I'm like, okay, I'll just sure. do that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that character, Dijkstra, who I kept wanting to call Dijkstra. Mm-hmm. Um, from, Lanny, uh, Lanny. 1980s <laughs> Mets fame. Uh, he's the one who's played by the actor who plays Dougal uh, in Outlander. Graham and... McTaggish. Oh, is he the guy who's talking to himself? Yeah. Was he the guy Talk... with like without fingers or something? In the... He's a pirate or he something? He was like the buffalo. Oh, no, he had, like, his shirt. The guy talking to the owl, who yeah, I yeah, assume yeah. is a priestess. Yeah, I mean, the owl yeah, like, is crazy. Co- coming up, we're he's... seeing things through the owl's eyes. Right, so right. The owl is definitely like... I think the owl is supposed to be like sentient and talking back to him because mm-hmm. he says a couple of times like "good idea." But well, right. like, like who, to me, it was a wizard's familiar kind of a thing. Right. What's the? There's a specific Greek goddess who is an owl. I know it's not oh, Athena. Greek, yeah, and it was very much like a, it was just reminding me of uh, Perseus mm-hmm. in that whole story. Yeah, I just thought like especially given who his character is in Outlander, but also like for his entrance to be throwing a knife through someone's neck, I was like, yeah, okay, that tracks. That, such a badass yeah i I didn't like it but (laughs) But also 
No, I had no ahead. idea why why the guy drank the poison when it was right. so clear. Yeah. Like, I think it was like either drink this or it's going to hurt a lot more, you know, when I kill you. I, I, but what were I, those people doing? It went too fast for me to realize. Yeah, like, the, they were trying to poison the king, the king for whatever reason. I guess they're, you know, Nilfgaardian um, uh, converts or whatever you want to say. This, I think this is a good segue to a, a point I wanted to bring up. It touches on the elves and then also, like, I felt like that woman was, like, one of the very few, like, Asian or, like, East Asian-looking people in the whole show. Um, and so, like, when she then instantly got killed, I was like, eh. But, like, you know, little plug for the spinoff with Michelle Yeoh. Um, as, you know, an old, uh, old school, like, a thousand years old elf, you know, warrior, right? I mean, a thousand years before this. There's a prequel. They're making a prequel. Michelle Yeoh is playing an elf. One thing I think is really interesting in this series is that they've taken sort of human notions of race and, like, remove them from seeming relevant. Yeah. You know, like, they, I mean, I guess most of them, you know, well, like, it just seems like the human notion of race isn't really relevant within the story, but racism and, you know, cultural yeah. oppression is very relevant with the elves. So they've kind of, I think, sort of found a way to explore the subject without having it be directed at you know, human races the way it is in, you know, most human stories. And I, I kind of, I personally like that. I, I would contrast that with the show you mentioned last time, Shadow and Bone, where they sort of do that, but then they're like, oh, but you're part Shu or what, or Han. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, there's definitely the, like, the, the Asian nation and the more, like, it's... it's, it's yeah. The, 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 the treatment of the, the nation that is a stand-in for China... Right. In that is not very good, yeah, to be sure. Yeah. But yeah, cause I, I like that. You're right, like, among elves, there are black elves and white elves and, 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 you know, elves of all sorts of different, like, what we would think of as ethnic or racial derivations and right. um, uh, not derivations, backgrounds, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and same with the humans. And uh, we have we seen dwarves? We, we hear that dwarves I, exist. They were in the episode with the dragons. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. They're mostly yeah. Scottish as far as we've seen so far, but we've only seen a couple of dwarves, so... Yeah. No, and you're right. I like that. I like that's a fun way of, like, saying that there's a different kind of a racial – in some ways, it's actually, like, you know, race is a human concept. It doesn't actually have any biological meaning. Right. Here, like, race actually is – like, they're talking about different sentient races. Right. That can clearly intermix and intermingle. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's an interesting way of playing with that concept. Um, and then the, the – I, I thought um, when Yaskier shows up, like, and he's talking about, you know, oh, well, first they'll come for the elves, then they'll come for this group, then they'll mm -hmm. come for the artists. And, you know, it was kind of like, a, you know, first they come for the Jews, then they the come labor for, union. you know, right. Right. exactly. I have in my notes, it seemed very Germany of them. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think that was very deliberate. And it being a Polish story, like, I think mm -hmm. that might not be totally coincidence. Uh, I have to apologize, Fox. I have to take something back, something I didn't notice after we met up with Yasker again. And I do yeah. think he's very much in love with Ger Gerald. I Absolutely. Didn't, I didn't get it in the first one. But yeah. he's in love with him. Yeah, yeah. And it, it feels it like unrequited. Right? But yeah, when he was like, I'm heartbroken. And then the way he's singing it. And the, the, like, the way he comes in so hard and yeah. so angry at Yennefer, I was like, wait a minute. You guys saw each other from right. between the gin time. Like the gin thing, I would understand why you would still be mad. But you guys were together and, and did things the after dragon, that. Yeah. Why are you so hateful at her yeah. right now? I, yeah. I didn't understand where all that was coming from. And you can try to make his hair as long as you want and give him a cool jacket. He's still not cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah, but I, I agree. And I, I, was, I was thinking, as I edited and listened to that episode, I realized, I don't think I made myself clear. It's not that I think the episode is telling us that, like, the two of them have been together as lovers or something like that. It's that I think that there is a, a definitely an unrequited, like, I, uh, yeah, Yaskier to me is, like, he will sleep with anyone. Like, I think right, right. Just, he's, he's, he's much, pansexual. He's yeah. very bi pan, yeah, yeah. you know, um, Elves, dwarves, bring it on. Sure, you know, right. Genders, whatever. <laughs> Dragons um, in human form. Yeah, sure. Let's try that. And yeah, I, I think it's unrequited, and I think that there's a, but that like there was there was some kind of a bond between the two of them that like you know I think like there's enough there to write fan fiction that I'm not going to object to. You know, it's that right. kind of sure. Thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I liked that because part of what I got from his relationship, especially toward Jennifer, is that part of it is jealousy, mm. but part of it's mm. also the like. 
if the person I love is going to be with you, how dare you not respect? You have oh, the thing yeah, I yeah. want. How dare you not respect it enough? How dare right. you hurt him? Yeah, uh, in a way that, that feels like that a little sense. bit not as just like like jealous. If it being just jealousy feels a little like, eh, mm. but this feels a little bit more like, you know, there was yeah I. You have what I can't have, and how dare you, you know... Like, cast it off as if it's... There was pretty much that... They pretty much said that when he was like, you know, you need this guy... uh, Oh, no, wait, never mind. Ignore all that. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Ashley watched ahead. Anyway, um... I watched 27 minutes ahead, and then I stopped, because I thought about what you said. (laughs) I had in my notes, actually, basically exactly what Ashley, you're saying, that was like, sort of a mea culpa, but at the same time, like, specifically, I think the word you used was tension, in the mm-hmm. previous episode, and I think, I mean, as you're saying now, it's it's less about attention between the two of them of like a, a tension of attraction of like two way attraction, and more a. It seems like Yaskier is attracted to Gerald or Geralt. Jeez, now you got me saying that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and and like and that there is this like unrequited, you know, and Geralt cares about Yaskier, but like doesn't want to act like he cares about care about him. Right. But then also, I mean, he's I mean, who knows what his actual you know full orientation is? But he seems like he's pretty much a lot of the time just like uh, like doesn't want any attachments, you know. Yeah. And, and Yennefer was kind of the one or the second time. After, you know, he seemed legitimately interested in the princess who got murdered by... Yeah, yeah. poor Triss. Oh, him. But, yeah. And, and to me, in a way that, like, I don't think it's gay baiting. I don't think it's supposed to be explicit. But, like, what you said about, like, uh, Geralt, like, having, you know, caring for him but not wanting to show that, I think you can read... I think it's one of those things where, like, there's mm. openness in the story to read that as sure. possible. Like, his, you know... His version of like I could be attracted to this person and whatever that would mean. Yeah. But yeah, I don't. I, I'm not by any means thinking that it's there in the story. But I like that it made clear who, who where Yaskier is coming from. Yeah. yeah I see and, it from his side. Yeah. And and I just Yennefer hugging him just felt no. like I got how yeah. awkward it felt for him. But I was right. also like, that's that makes no no that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like, yeah. Of course, that's what Yennefer yeah, would. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. So like happy she doesn't seem like a bit, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, also, I think, like, when he said art, they'll come for artists, I think maybe that's a little bit of a sort of euphemism. Yeah, no, I think know. definitely that was that was a part of what they meant there. Um, and, and yeah, Jennifer's line about, like, I miss the days when you saying barb things are getting to me was, like, the worst thing I had to deal with. Right. Before we move on from Jasker, I'd just like to talk about how meta the show got, making fun of itself and its timeline. Oh, so oh yes. Good. With that guy out oh, there. that was great. And I was like, yes. And then the showrunners <laughs> being able to be like, shut up, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Just enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed that they took the second to, like, oh. acknowledge how ridiculous the timeline was in the first one and then the tell us all to shut up. To me. <laughs> really yeah, there were so many great things of that that, that were kind of callbacks to, to things from season one. And, and then in some ways, actually, I, I think I don't think it's in, I don't think it's coincidental that you know we're just talking about how part of Yennefer's thing is w- when she f- she can't hold back her emotion when even though it's not the practical or right thing to do, and for her the emotion often is I don't want to be told what to do. Right. Yaskier is very similar. For mm-hmm. him, it's that he can't take being insulted, but like right. the whole point is to be quiet and sneaky and get on this boat, and he says to himself. I shouldn't say this. I should, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm, I'm like, I'm gonna, am I going to say this? I'm going to say it. I'm gonna say it. <laughs> and it, I felt like it's not like it makes sense to me that like the, the connection that each of them have to Yennefer to Gerald is very different. But I think in some ways there is kind of that yin and yang that they each have with him, and so for the two of them to connect just feels. I, I like it. I like mm-hmm. it, too. Yeah. I also like how they're trying to be undercover, yet she's wearing a bright purple witch, like <laughs> Sarah Jessica Parker's <laughs> witch hood what? from uh, Hocus Pocus running around. <laughs> we'll just ha- wear these hoods that are super the bright pointy. and super, <laughs> like, nobody will think that we're looking suspicious <laughs> at all. I don't look like a witch. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, he says to her, like, gosh, you look terrible. And I was like, does she? Does she? <laughs> like, <laughs> The smell I get. You can't see the smell on TV. Yeah. But... Yeah. I mean, she did just come out of a sewer. So. Yeah. And right. I get like, yeah. I don't. So this Baba Yaga keeps telling her that all she has to do is say the words and she can have mm-hmm. her power back. So, like she just keeps whispering in her ear and her ear. But I don't understand what any of that means at this point. Well, so I thought it was interesting that Francesca talking to Franchilla was like, you know, 
somebody posing as so and so told me such and such and like they both know that that was baba yaga right, mm-hmm. right. or they call her the undying mother i think something yeah. like that i'm sure there's a real name but right my brain is um, but they but like they're like we got offered this deal and we're taking it and um yennefer got offered this deal and she's like nope no no that's really my girl wanted, but nope <laughs> right and it's like I mean, at some point, is it like, is she being offered the power back? Or is she being offered, like, you know, her, her reproductive options back? Mm-hmm. Or both? Mm-hmm. Like, is it like you can actually have both? As long as you just make a deal with me and I'll mm-hmm. let you know later what you, we get in exchange for that. I don't know. Because I'm pretty um, sure it definitely whispered uh, right before she was going to cut the guy's head off. It was, like, it was like, say the word and you'll have your power. And I was like, who said right. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was her. <laughs> That was the undying mother. My, my set, going back, going back, because I think it connects here, is that Francesca's pregnancy is in some way connected to whatever deal she made with Baba Yaga. Oh, 100%. Oh, and, okay. And I think that yeah. that we're supposed to, I think that is very relevant for that storyline, but also like, hey, Yennefer, this person has been proven to help with magical pregnancies when right, people right. can't have pregnant, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the elves can get pregnant, but, but yeah, they but have they their can't, own can't right. problems. They have their own issues. So hmm. I think, yeah, that's supposed to be very much a connection there. Interesting. Interesting. Do you, no. I was going to ask, like, do you have an outline or are we just going to kind of like barrel through and. Uh, I, I have kind of an outline of things that I'm wanting us to hit, but we're kind of, I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm pulling us to the next thing on the outline when, when you hit a pause, but we're at least hitting most of the, the stuff. Are we ready to get um, to Siri? I, I was going to say, so, yeah. Right? I was going to say, yeah. The one last thing I want to say about Yennefer, and then hmm. we can get to uh, the whole wizard, uh, whole Witcher storyline. What do you think is going on when she wants to go rescue uh, Gerald? At the, uh, when she wants to go rescue uh, uh, the bard at the very end there? You know, he leaves her, and he, his leaving is kind of final. It's, you know, very like, oh, you're such I'm a glad we got to have this good moment. Good riddance. Mm-hmm. I'm like, get over yourself. <laughs> but then she hears, like, something happens to him. Yeah. She sees the broken loot. And, and even though uh, Nilfgaardian guy, Mr. Cheekbones, is like, we got to go, she clearly wants to go help him. What? Sir Cheekbones to you. Sir Cheekbones, <laughs> Sir Cheekbones to me, yes. I think it shows her character like deep down inside like she she has this she does have a heart in there and you know I think she does care about uh, Yasker for whatever reason or you know this doesn't want to see him hurt. She was around him for like some very kind of formative moments not like as a young person but you know in her more recent life I think Mm -hmm. and I, I think you know, on some level, he matters to her. You know, yeah. I think Geralt matters to her, even though, you know, there was the, the wish. But, like, she still feels like she feels that, you know. And I think yeah. it is a little bit of, you know, sort of like, does Yaskir really hate her? Or, like, no, I think he's, jealous. he's angry at her, right? Mm-hmm. Because, yeah. like, you know, she could have what he wants, but she tosses it aside, right? So. Right. I think, you know, there is a connection there and she was genuinely happy to see him. Like maybe that, that period of time seems like it was kind of her happiest when she yeah. wasn't, you know, she might've been sort of on the run or whatever, but like she was off doing her own thing. You mm-hmm. know, it was a period of time when she was, she was who she wanted to be to, to whatever extent anyway, she could be. And so I think she's just like, ah, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't know. Maybe she's just into saving people now. You know, <laughs> you, get, I mean, I you do it once, you get used to or it. Or maybe she did it for Geralt. Like right. She knows it would sure. hurt him to find out mm-hmm. that, you know, she could have helped or stopped mm-hmm. it. I think it's all that. I also think both Yask, uh, Yaskier especially, he has no hold on her. You know, she, right. she's been going through, like, you know, the all these different people who want things from her and want to control her and are setting these rules for her, you know? And I think that's the, like, the wizards are saying, you have to do this and this to, you know, to, to make us happy. Baba Yaga is saying, say the words, right. follow my orders. Mm-hmm. That at least, it does, Yaskir isn't Ooh. that, you know? Right, he doesn't tell her what to do. You know do. what, too? She's part elf, and for some reason, yasker has been the Pied Piper of elves, or the right. Sandpiper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Helping all the elves get out of right. town. So and that, so helping too, him could be helping the elves. Yeah, yeah. or like yeah. a... You know, he's been doing a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah I, sure. think I think I think it's all that. I forgot about that. The sandpiper. I was like, what? <laughs> I, the fact that I didn't put it together before I saw him really pissed oh. me off. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, I had no idea. Wait, uh, but did, when you heard, you were like, 
Ah, uh, no, but I heard him right? singing. Yeah. And I figured out it was him. But like when they were talking about the sandpiper, oh. I didn't put it together. Yeah. That it, yeah, it was they, so oh. obvious. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, never played pipes, so yeah, it was yeah. kind of a, right. But yeah, no, I, I thought like once they said like, oh, once he's done with his show, I'm like, there's only one person who does shows in this world. Uh, and yeah. Once, was... once they said the show, I started to think it was going to be him. For sure. But and then I then. heard his voice and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no, no. It's, he's, I, I cheered. I, I, I do happy. think they waited long enough to reintroduce him that there was, you know, an element of surprise. That, yeah. That there yeah. wouldn't have been if it was like just an episode after the last time he showed up. Yeah. Uh, so let's get back. Let's now talk about what's going on up in the, the Witcher's Keep. Uh, training montage. The, <laughs> training montage. <laughs> I really liked that. Like mm-hmm. when it started with all the other people in the in the keep not liking her, I, I kind of was a little eye, eye rolly because uh, and not really not really buying it because we've seen that cliche so many times. But I quit. I liked that how quickly the the ones who were kind of teasing her and like, look, you can't be a witcher. I like how quickly they went from like, okay, no, she's got a heart, she's trying. We're going to support her. Yeah. I thought Even it was tough that, like, love from the beginning. Yeah. I, I want to push back on the sort of, I, I just listened to our episode on, on one and two and I, I didn't feel like they were necessarily uncomfortable with her being there. I didn't think, I mean, mm, some of them, okay. right. And some of them don't necessarily like it that much. And some of them are like, look, you're not going to be a witcher kid, you know, right. but I, I did feel like there was definitely more of a mix of reactions and like she kind of won them over very quickly by sort of like, um, sort of messing with them. You know, I mean, I've, I've had people that I've worked with in the past where they'll just like give everyone shit all the time. And like the first time, like you give shit back to them, there's like a, all right, right. you know, and then it's like, now it's like, we're equals or we're like more on the same level. Whereas like people who just kind of take it and take it and take it, they just keep just being an ass to them. And it become, turns into more of a playful sort of, it feels like she's become more one of like, part of the brotherhood in a way Mm -hmm. um even before the training montage really got got going but then once it did it was you know and i really liked how like then Geralt shows up at the end and he's like "Mm, almost (laughs) so close the same (laughs) thing he was like so close and then he was like "Mm, so close and i love that i love the fact that she didn't finish it because it would have been too soon like she was getting through it she was getting beat up she was definitely breaking some nails I really, like, not that I enjoyed watching a child get beat up like that, but I did enjoy it. Like, watching her get up again, it's just, you yeah. know. Yeah. I, yeah. Lo- I love that kind of stuff for some reason. And and if she keeps training with these guys, like, she's going to be the Gamora of of this, like, the yeah. fiercest woman in the nation or whatever, right. the continent. And then on top of that, if they make they do make her a witcher, like, oof, she's going to be badass. Well, she- She's going to be sprouting a bunch of flowers, right? That then they can make a whole bunch of witchers. So yeah, what, she's kind of like the, mo- the mother of witchers in some way. Is like, that what that is? I'm very confused about what the flower, like elder blood. Right. I, I think what we're supposed to think is that both her and her mother were elders. Have so were they yeah. elves? Yeah, and grandmother. No, I, I think th- elders are different. Though. Uh, I think okay. it's a whole different thing. It's very confusing. Uh, it is confusing. Right. But didn't all the elder <laughs> magic come from elves? Maybe. So, because it would make sense. That's why Cleanthe hates them so much because she herself might have been part of it and just kind of push it down. Mm. And the daughter, because where are these powers coming from? Yeah, no, it is. uh, Okay, so (laughs) I gave it a quick goog. Uh, And the elder (laughs) races or old races (laughs) is a collective name used by humans to describe those who preceded them on the continent, um, including uh, dwarves, elves, and gnomes. Oh, maybe she's a gnome. Which we haven't. Maybe she's right. part gnome. That'd be great. <laughs> well, and the, uh, but so she could said, be part elf or whatever it is, you know. Although they said that elder well, blood hasn't yeah. been seen for like a thousand years. Right. So the elves so, aren't. Yeah. Maybe it's like these are like trueborn elves. Yeah. I'm not. Right. And so the witchers know. come from elder blood. How does that work? Yeah, like they use it to grow these flowers, and then they crush, they you know, mortar and pestle the flowers oh. into some sort of yeah. a, a tincture or some such. And you know, yeah. then 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 give it to young children, and then send them <laughs> off in the woods to see whether they get killed. And so they haven't had them for thousands of years. So where did all these these witchers come from? Oh, I think they had like a stash like of it, like a little bit left, yeah. or or a lot left. And maybe there was a raid on Kaer Morhen oh, when Carol was a okay. child. 
and right. the, and everything got destroyed. I, I think a movie that's animated might answer some. That, of that might answer some of the questions. Yeah, yeah I, okay. I think I'm gonna have to go ahead and watch that before the yeah, next time we record. It, yeah, give it a look. Uh, because there's nothing going on the next couple of days. No, uh, I don't have like yeah. 80 million family uh-huh. members coming to town. Uh, yeah, I, I I I feel like I'm not trying to figure that out yet because I feel like there's a lot we're gonna learn about that still. But I'm definitely kind of curious how it all fits together. Just going back on Siri a bit. Um. I do think I, I read that a l- I didn't think they were initially doing tough love. I think they were trying to get her to stop trying to be a witcher, but then she kind of impressed them. But but either way, I, I do love the way it's it's played out. I also found I really loved where she went in the second episode that we watched, where you know, Triss shows up mm-hmm. and, and here's at least the way I read mm-hmm. it, and, and actually I'm actually especially I'm kinda of curious how you saw it. Um the way I saw it is Siri has been we always knew that she didn't love, like, the finery and the beauty and stuff. She liked to be, you know, dress up like one of the boys and play bu- play the, like, the dice bones game, you know, from season one and stuff mm-hmm. like that. She wants to be a witcher. She wants to kind of be one of the guys. Then Triss shows up, and she notices that, like, Geralt is attracted to her and all these others are attracted to her. And it felt to me like she's kind of like, oh, it's not that she wants to not be a witcher, but she's like, I want to try that too. And mm-hmm. so she comes out in this beautiful dress and her hair and she's got the flower in her hair and the guys are like, Oh, what did you lose a bet or something like that? And, and, and it hurts her mm-hmm. it, to me. It felt very like she's still a child. She's still figuring out what she wants to be. But like, it, it felt like it could have just been like, Oh, I'm jealous of Triss cause Gerald is giving her attention, but it wasn't that no. it was just, I'm seeing the way this woman is being treated. And, I I want to try that as well, as well as being this witcher type. And there's you can't forget, like, she was a princess. And even though she probably yeah. didn't like it, there's part of you that does like it. And my favorite line from her was, um, mm. you know, my grandmother was a warrior and she also wore yes. dresses. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I – because I was like, I like to dress up, but I also wish I was a warrior. Like, I can be Xena during the day and then, right. you know, Gwen- Guinevere at night. Like, I <laughs> would like – like, I totally get that. And there's no reason why you can't. You can still be feminine right. and a warrior queen. And that's what I like that she was trying to do. And I love that Triss just destroyed them. You know, like, yeah. you don't even have a cloth for her time of the month. Like, you guys are right, a bunch right. of assholes. Yeah. And I just really enjoy I, I liked that whole scene. And it's like, yeah, wear the dress, girl. Go, go, go fight all day and then wear your brush your hair and wear a dress. There's nothing wrong with that. I like it. Yeah, I thought sure. it was important. Yeah, yeah th- th- those, those are some of my, my favorite lines as well. And I'm glad that you said them. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, it, I do think like she very much like she doesn't want to be told what to be. She doesn't want to be told she can only be one thing. She wants to be herself, and mm-hmm. that can mean whatever she wants it to, right? Like right. she she can wear a dress and she can fight battles. Like she can she can do magic. And, you know, she's obviously a fighter mage already, yeah. right? Yeah. So <laughs> she's doing good. And I yeah, love that know. Trish shows up, and then we start to explore. Like, hey, you're also got some magic in you so let's work with that because you're going to be like a whole different level of fighter yeah right exactly and i love that in that they revealed that mausak wasn't just an advisor to her grandmother but was somewhat brought in because they knew that uh siri's mother Mm -hmm. uh the the daughter of the queen um had this magic and so mausak was kind of there to help her as well right Right. Um, i hate his name Mouse sack. Mouse sack. <laughs> Sounds like very small testicles. Even like mouse sack, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tiny scrotum. You and your mouse, mouse sack. sack. <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about Triss and Gerald as well, because I, I, I always liked her character from before, and I thought it's... It, she kind of feels like a little bit of, like, she's playing the role that we would think Yennefer would eventually play as being both kind of like a flirtation with Gerald and a mentor, you know, witch type to um, Siri. But it didn't feel like it was a pro- – it felt very real. And the the line she had about, um, you know, when they're talking about, like, she kind of came on to him and he was like, no, thank you. And then the next morning she says, your pain excited me because I, I had a chance to feel something. Yeah. Like, yeah. That hit me so hard. Like, in terms of thinking about, like, you know, in my own, you know, times where I was just like, I'm going to do something stupid or be around, you know, people who are hurting or hurting myself because I just want to feel something or, like – people who I knew who like self cut or, you know, did whatever it was like that. I want to feel something, even if it's pain or someone else's pain. Like I, I just loved that. And I, I, her, her motivations and, and the way the whole dynamic played out felt so real to me. Yeah. I felt so bad for her. Does she, 
the only thing her and Yen had talked about him was, you know, she was like, oh, I met a witcher, Gerald of whatever. And she was like, oh, don't trust them. So does Tris not know about their relationship to tell him like she's still alive? Because that was bothering me that she didn't tell him that Yennefer was still alive. Did Tris know that? Oh. I thought Tris was never. Yeah. Oh, Tris... they no. had a conversation. Yeah, they had a conversation. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're right. Yeah. You're correct. And then when Did she was naming about... off Did the he's... names. You know, she was, like, saying all the names, and he stopped her. Yeah. And right, I was right. like, no, let her get to the end, and you're going to be like, right. what about Yennefer? I'm like, because right. it's still bothering me that they ha- we're on episode like four. They just, <laughs> yeah, they just didn't have that conversation, right? Right. Does, I they mean, didn't. does she think that he thinks she's dead? I don't know. That's the oh, thing. I yeah. don't know. I, I, think the thing I, I think the only way it makes sense to me is if she doesn't realize he's important to her. That she that she's important, right? Right. Yeah, Tris, yeah. Let me stop pronouns. Tris does not realize that Geralt would care if Yennefer is alive or not. Right. Yes. Right. 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 And yeah, and I think that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then and then Tris portaled Geralt out of there, and it's ex boyfriend time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yennefer's two fellows. Yeah. And like now, I feel like bad things are going to happen at Kaer Morin because. Here's the thing, like they're like, oh, we can make more witchers with her blood. I know. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, it, mm, mm. you know a little bit more about Vesmir. Is that something yeah. that he had seemed like he would do? Because he seems so <sighs> wholesome to me, and it makes me worry that I read him wrong. <laughs> well, I, I would not go with wholesome, um, but father figure, daddy. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I, don't got I mean, so <laughs> anything I know about him from outside this show is he feels. A little bit like Geralt in the sort of reluctant hero type thing. Mm-hmm. But also, um, I mean, he's definitely against certain of the sort of fuckery in terms of like making witchers and that whole mm-hmm. process. Um, but he was really into being a witcher. And um, uh, he, he was more of a sort of swashbuckler than the sort of like, you know, kind of, broody. you know, broody. Yeah, he was yeah. not a broody witcher, you know. He was a much more flamboyant witcher. <laughs> and at least the way I'm getting it, because there's kind of a step removed of, it's that her blood causes the flowers. Right. I, right. I don't get the sense that they need to, like, you know, drain her of her blood or do something right. terrible. It's just like, yeah, you keep training her, she's going to keep bleeding in places. <laughs> and it seems like there's flowers, flowers everywhere yeah, at this yeah, point, yeah. right? Because yeah. she's been so, bleeding right. all over be. that place. Exactly. Um, so, questions so yeah, about my, the monoliths? Oh, when we get there, because I have no idea what you're talking about. Really. <laughs> I have no answers. Okay. So I what I remember nothing. is the monolith broke when mm-hmm. she screamed, when um, mm, Sir Cheekbones, to- when Siri oh, right. was taken by Sir, Sir Cheekbones, she screamed yeah. and it made that huge crack yes. in the earth and broke the monolith. So are they saying that the monoliths are what used to keep the worlds from converging again? And the new monsters from coming in, and since she broke one, it's like a beacon going out for the new oh. monsters to come in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're and are they the same monoliths from two thousand and one, a space odyssey? Yeah, this is getting too close to me to like you know sacred timeline TVA nonsense. Okay, because like, I was just like I didn't. I don't know. That's that's what I was. I thought that's like you know they're like this monster is not from here, right? You know. And the thing broke, so does that mean some kind of, like... It just right, takes me back to 1982's The Gate with Stephen Dorff. Like, when you open <sighs> the gate, the monsters are going to come through because you broke the thing that was holding them back, the seal right. portal. So that makes it really easy to bring in these monsters, right. but why? <laughs> well, that leads to another... Just obviously, like, blame and guilt is becoming is a, is a theme that we're dealing with a lot here. Yeah. And they mentioned something early, and they, they kind of let go of it, but it, it was there's one character who brought it up that... Something that Geralt did in in part related to Ciri was what led to Eskel's death, which I didn't quite understand. Who's How did Eskel? Oh. oh the, Eskel the, is a the tree, tree, beard. tree beard. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was all the Eskel's fault. Far, as far as I saw, that was his fault. Like, he was infected by that thing. Oh. Yeah, to me that... Well, what, wasn't that hand when he actually literally looked like he was smelling a for real fart when he saw the yeah. hand? Wasn't that because the they're being drawn to her? Yeah. So maybe the Eskel thing was because, because I don't know. It but they don't know live? that it's because they brought her there, right? Like maybe he was, was just pull. saying sorry because he. Yeah, I don't know. 
Maybe I that's what I thought. He was just being like, sorry, yeah. I killed that yeah. guy. And there's not a lot of them. And mm-hmm. not sure. until the next episode, they didn't know they could make more. That is, I will say, here's the thing. Um, the whole idea of like, you know, you feed one of your fallen to the wolves. I think it's, it's a kind of, I kind of appreciate that. But if your own who has fallen has been infected by a monster, it seems like a great way to get monster wolves. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? True. Like, yeah. it doesn't seem like a great plan. It's like, maybe let's just burn this dude. Like, we'll just do it a little different this time. Yeah. You know? I, I, I think agree. it's interesting that they're playing a little bit with, like, where magic and science overlap. Yeah. Because, like, they had that whole, like, kind of scientific laboratory thing set up to study, uh, you know, something yeah. there. So, yeah. Pre- presumably Kinda. they have some knowledge of that. But mm-hmm. uh, Magic I, is a science in this world, right? It seems like it's very close together. I mean, yeah. Or or at least I'd say there's a scientific exploration into what magic is and how it functions. Yeah, and that in that way kind of reminds me of Shadow of Bone, Shadow and Bone to some extent. Mm -hmm. They they talked about that. They talked about magic as like the the dark science or something like that. I don't remember what it is. But yeah, that there are people who seem to think that there's a scientific. They can understand it scientifically, right? But also that there's a lot that they can't. Um. And I, there's a lot more we can say, but I know, Ashley, you need to go pretty soon. So um, is there any other kind of last things either one of you want to bring up? We get Dara back, her little – her elf friend from yep. the first season. Yeah, in, in a potentially not the best way. I mean, <laughs> we'll see – you know, we'll see how that goes. Right. Um, Dykstra is going to um, use her as a spy, I guess, was the idea. Right, yeah. exactly. Because of him. Dara, right? Dara, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dara, that's right. Yeah, so that's gonna be fun. We'll yeah. see where that goes. Um, um, I, I'm I'm very curious about Dijkstra and where like the whole owl, the familiar. But it also feels like I was so happy that we were having really oh, yeah, two yeah, main yeah, plot lines, yeah, and so yeah. I'm like, Ugh. I I care a lot more about the wizard politics stuff than you do. Like I'm loving all that, mm-hmm. but it also is like, uh, don't give me a whole new thing to care about because it's just it's too much right now. Yeah, I do feel like they're maybe going to be watering down parts of the plot by stretching themselves too much. Uh, you know, too thin, like right. butter across too much toast. Wait, <laughs> oh, sh- you know what? Or, oh, that's when Lord they of the were. Rings. I in my notes. I have, I have S- Daryl. What was the 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 stuff they were saying was coming from the monolith, the element element as in like on the periodic table, Sterile. Oh, right. And then she touches it, and it the vision says that she's the daughter of chaos. Is it talking about Siri, or is it like? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. she's gonna. Yeah. Okay, I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. Which is like a very like chosen one trope and like right. but I do like that instead of her just like suddenly having all these powers, like she actually has to train and, and learn you know, how to use not, them. Yeah. But that's why I hope like Yennefer comes in and that's what happens. I don't know. Right. I mean, that just seems way too cookie cutter easy. And yeah, I just yeah. don't think it's gonna be that easy as her yeah. coming in and being I, like, Oh, you have all this chaos, I don't have any, well let me show yeah. you how to do it. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I feel like maybe Siri's going to be the villain of, like, season five. Oh, that'd be know? cool. Like, I think it's very possible, yeah. I, you know, she's... Yeah, I, it's funny how we were all saying in season one that she was kind of one of the most frustrating parts because there just wasn't much to her character. I feel like she is... She's one of the... Like, she wins the most The biggest improvement. Yeah. Yes, yes, like... yes. For sure. Most improved. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll have a lot more to talk about. We're going to... Um, uh, figure out when we're going to have uh, episode. Uh, the next two episodes will come out of this. You know, hey, law of surprise. We don't know what's going to come out. We'll see what happens. <laughs> no, I don't want any. Uh, Ashley children. knows a little bit. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> I know twenty-seven <laughs> minutes of. <laughs> I think mostly it's going to be when we're like, okay, we can take a break from families to you know find some time to record or whatever it is. But uh, it may well come after the holidays. But frankly, I'm imagining you all may not be podcasting as much out there in listener land. But uh, Ashley, for. Uh, what else you you been up to right now these days on Strand of Panda Land? Um, you can hop over to the MCU cast to check out our reaction and uh, podcast on Spider Man. Uh, we have ho- the finale of Hawkeye coming up this Wednesday, which Matthew you're going to be on as well with the feedback. I'm very excited to see how all that's going to end. So yeah, really just look for me on uh, the MCU cast and here right now. Speaking cool. of ca- uh, Hawkeye, like we had this little bit of like deaf representation. Yeah, and then he got really cool. et by the monster. <laughs> I was like, oh, "Fuckers!" I found that character interesting. I you know? know he was. He was like charming. He was yeah. like so what? hopeful. He's gonna Especially marry no, a raven-haired girl. Right. <laughs> he points at her. I was like, "Oh, 
th there's often a sense of like you know the disabled character has to be kind of like somewhat chaste and pure mm -hmm. and having him be like a 16 year old boy hanging out with Yennefer and yeah, like, yeah, yeah yeah he like does the sign language of voluptuous and <laughs> right. like, he's into it <laughs> and like exactly. yeah go boy you know yeah Geralt's force field power was dope as fuck, too. Oh, that was, oh, yes, yeah, I don't know yes. if we'd seen that before, and but they, I was like, ooh. Yeah, I don't think that we had. And and I, I, and he's used more like the the heating the blade up kind mm -hmm. of thing, too. Yeah, and that little, like, which, shield thing he had for a moment. Yeah, the, the like, force bubble, I think. Sue yeah. Storm's yeah. force field. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I kind of wish that we'd seen more of him getting trained in, in this season. Because I feel like... It's like it's possible that witchers would just continually train, right, and right, improve, yeah. and and so I think it's a little weird that like we didn't see much of that in the first season, but now all of a sudden we see it. But like, yeah, like, like I'll take it, but like I would have liked to see it more as character growth as opposed to effects budget growth. Yeah, yeah, like, I was thinking it's either effects budget or for some reason oh. they didn't want to get lost in the effects; they wanted to be more right. character season one. But yeah, I I would like I figured it, it out. Even though there's a clear, like, out-of-story reason, I wish there was an in-story reason for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I will say that I think what happened is they're like, oh, we're taking away Yennefer's magic. We can use that budget for, like, oh, Geralt's uh, oh, yeah, magic. I like it. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. All right, Paul, what about you? Where can people find your stuff? I, I'm Zen Badman. I'll start doing stuff again because I am actually feeling better now. Yay. Uh, that's all. Yay. Cool. Look forward to that. Uh, as for myself, I'm The Ethical Panda. Find me on Facebook, on Twitter. Email me, theethicalpan at gmail.com. Uh, I just did a uh, uh, episode on Spider-Man as part of the Next Real Family podcast. You can find that on the film board. I'll put up a link to that. I don't know if it's gone live yet, but I will definitely put that up on the, the Ethical Panda um, social medias. I, I've also been doing a lot of... Uh, I've also been doing, as Ashley mentioned, the coverage of Hawkeye on um, the MCU cast. That's been a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to have a lot of... I'm sure we're going to get into the ethics of Spider-Man a lot because there's a lot of great ethical questions that movie raises. Um, and yeah, all sorts of great stuff. Let us know what you think, though, about The Witcher. We'd love to hear your feedback. Email us, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's all The Ethical Panda. And most importantly, though, have a great day. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, birdie.